been a heck of a game by our guys. Um, you know, one of the things that we talked about, obviously they came off of back-to-back, and we know what it's like to play in back-to-back -back situations. And so we told our guys to play fast, play as fast as you can, and they did a pretty good job of it. We had 19 fast break points, which was huge. I thought we could have played a little faster at times. Um, you know, I thought defensively we, we flew around. Uh, you know, they, they made six threes, two of them really late, and so our ability to just fly around and contest was huge. <clears throat> I thought that was a big difference in the, in the game tonight. Um, I mean, we had a lot of great performances by a lot of, a lot of guys. Uh, continuing defensively, obviously, JaVale. One defensive player in the game for us. He changed a lot of shots. He had three blocks. Uh, he was really, really good in his minutes, uh, especially in the first half, uh, to help us create some separation. Uh, Malik was fantastic off the bench, um, going nine for 14 with 26 points. Uh, but his, his shot selection were huge. They were really, really good. He hit a big floater for us off the glass when we were stuck in the mud a little bit. Uh, and we inserted him back in the game. Uh, Domus was huge. I, I tell you, Jokic is, he's obviously he's a heck of a player, but he's a big, big, big dude. And, you know, for Domus to have 15 rebounds and, and you know, in his time on the floor, 13, 13 of them defensively, um, that he was battling all night on the glass. Same with Kevin. Kevin had six defensive rebounds. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, for Fox to have uh, uh, 26, and 16, he had 16 assists, which is a career night. More importantly, he had those 16 assists with one to one turnover. This is a fantastic, fantastic night from uh, from our player, from our best player when we needed him the most. Mike, two more for you. First, who's the entourage with us tonight? Uh, entourage. This is this is my crew right here. I'm going to start with introduce yourself. Mila, introduce yourself. Yep. So that's my stepdaughter. Go ahead. I'm Eileen. That's her friend. I'm Santiago. That's my stepson. I'm Ethan. That's his buddy. And that's and Rochelle. My, that's my partner, Rochelle. Rochelle. That's my crew. Good luck charms, I'm guessing, right? What's that? They're the good luck charms, right? Good luck charms. I'm just missing uh, uh, my, my two boys, my grandson, and uh, my grandson's mom, and then my, my niece. They left early. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, to the actual game, though, yeah. the connection between Fox and Monk, just is it anything surprising to you now that you've seen it for almost a year now, just and how they continuously just work off each other? No, it, it's it's not. Both those guys can go get it off the dribble uh, for themselves, and they do a good job of spraying the basketball or finding an open guy. And you know, they've played together for so long that uh, you, you could tell from day one. That they were just in sync with one another, and you know it, it shows 99% of the time that they're on the floor together, and that's why we try to, that's why we bring Fox back with that second unit because uh, uh, him out there with Malik only enhances our play. Like second night of the back-to-back -back hasn't been too friendly to you guys so far. You mentioned the Nuggets on their second night, and they're able to kind of rally and hang around. What kind of lessons can your team and your guys learn from a championship team like that? That second night of back-to-backs. Uh, Jokic is a hell of a player. <laughs> I mean, we threw the kitchen sink at him, and he still had 36, 14, and 13 uh, with 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 uh, zero turnovers. So he's a, he's a hell of a player. Mike does a hell of a job with the team, and you know Reggie Jackson. He's he's not a backup point guard. He's a start point guard that happens to be in a backup situation with the Nuggets. So uh, hell of a team that. Uh, as the, the league's MVP, uh, how many times has he won? Twice, multi-time MVP, and, and you know you just <clears throat> hope that you can find ways to stay in the game and give yourself a chance like they did, especially on the road in the night on, on the back to back. Mike, you had a, a quick hook with Keegan there in the second quarter. You pulled him aside, and you guys had like a long discussion. Just what was that about, and how well do you think he responded there in the third quarter? Uh, you know the conversation. Just not me just telling him that shoot the ball, you're great, you're fine. Um, and uh, we're going to go to you, we're going to go to you all night, you're going to be in a situation again. And if you are, just shoot it. Um, but he, he, I thought he played, responded well. I thought he came back and we were, again, stuck in the mud a little bit. And he hit two big threes and, and then he hit a two. And 
and that got us going. And he's more than capable. Keegan's going to be fine at the end of the day. He just he just wants to do so well right now. And he doesn't realize that this is his second year, and that uh, things are going to happen uh, over the course of time. Hey Mike, uh, just with the career guy for Fox Nine, it's just, um with him as a primary scoring option, even with so many shooters around him, and the way you guys utilize Delmas on the DHO, like is that pretty impressive? I mean, just to <clears throat> see him maybe recognize the opportunity that when they're there to be able to you know set up a teammate and kind of do that balance between scoring and addition. Hundred percent. I. I uh, Late in the game, they went on a run. <clears throat> I took, I taken the leak out for, try to give them a couple minutes of rest, and um, they went on a run, and it was like maybe a th three point ball game or something like that, and I called a play uh, for, for Malik when he when he uh, got back in the game and he scored the little floater, he hit the bank floater, and uh, we went down on defense and I think they were sh they shot free throws, <clears throat> so I called the same play, and. Unbeknownst to me, until I saw it, saw us the play unfold at the other end. Uh, Fox had called me off, and he called his number with a play that he's pretty comfortable in, and then basically the same play we ran play after play after play at Minnesota. He called that play, and we ended up scoring. And um, so for me, I, I told him after the game, I said, I've been here a little over a year, and the best offensive play call I made in my entire career as a Sacramento Kings head coach was tonight. He kind of looked at me and I said, do you even know which play it was? He said, no. I said, well, I called this particular play and you called me off and you ran the play that you wanted to, to run. You called your number. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what MVP candidates do against the reigning NBA champions. And so for him to do that <coughs> speaks volumes and it speaks, bodes well to his 16 assists. He has to step up in games like this in order for us to win. Sometimes it can work in the flow offensively, everybody touching it, pace, spacing, and all that. But sometimes you need your guy to go get it. He did tonight. Mike, you mentioned the, the win over the Timberwolves um, twice in eight days. Now you guys have taken down you know one of the top teams in the West, and then you know to have an answer every time tonight that Denver came back at you. Like, how much does that just help to, to reinforce the the? The confidence, the mission, and, and the message? A lot, you know, because in life, no matter what you do, if you don't believe, you're in trouble. And um, the more <clears throat> situations that you could be in where there's some adversity, uh, there's a, a tough uh, opponent in front of you, um, and the more, the more times you're in those types of situations and you can overcome it, get a win, walk away feeling pretty good about yourself, it only... Um, um, adds to the belief that you already have and at the end of the day uh, we're still learning, we're still growing, we're still kind of trying to find our way as you can see by my rotations and stuff like that. Uh, so for us to get a win against a team like this uh, was, was really, really good and it should help our, our confidence and belief that uh, we're pretty freaking good. Coach, how impactful has JaVale McGee been as a better <coughs> leader for this team? Uh, he's been really impactful. He's been in a lot of situations. Obviously, he's been part of championship teams. And I told him when we were recruiting him, I said, hey, Dale, you're not just coming here to be a vertical threat offensively and, and uh, uh, be a guy that can defend that, that rim in the paint. I said, you have to use your voice. You've been in a lot of different situations, a lot of winning situations, and you know what's right and what's, what's not right. And so I need you to speak up. You're not going to, quote, unquote, be a captain or – part of our leadership committee, but uh, as a veteran guy that has been there and done that, people will listen to you. And so he has, and it's, it's much needed with our group. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys.